We've been giving a lot of love to the 2015 NHL entry draft the past few days, with Brock Besser and the entire crazy comparable situation going on with him, talking about guys like Dylan Strome and the Blackhawks. Let's take our sights over to another player who was drafted in 2015, who happens to be a very good, very young boating star, if not already star, and how for 2021-2022, it appears that he's going to be trying to break out of his shell and out of the shadow of those who were great alongside of him. Let's talk today about Zach Warinski, a 24-year-old 6'2", 212-pound left-handed defenseman who was drafted 8th overall by the Blue Jackets in 2015. By the way, just before we go further, let's just try to expand a little bit more as to how good this draft really was. Warinski, Meyer, Rontanen, followed up by a few other names, plus guys like Gurionov, DeBrusque, Barzal, Connor, Shabbat, Besser. Fantastic right there. Either way, though, Zach Wierenski was drafted 8th overall. As a July 1997-born player, he had already played a year with the University of Michigan Wolverines. He had 25 points in 35 games played. He did not actually make the jump to the NHL right away. They gave him the old Quinn Hughes, Cam York treatment, where they were like, okay, you're playing in Michigan, you're really good, you had your draft year there, which was okay, but we really want you to go back, and we want you to dominate. So you're going to play your draft plus one again with the Wolverines, and the year after that is when we're going to bring you onto our squad. We're seeing the same thing happen with Owen Power, by the way, if you're not making a little bit of a connection there. And Wierenski in his draft plus one was fantastic. A point per game, 36 point season in 36 games played. And he was an absolute monster for the Monsters in the AHL in the playoffs signing on after that season ended. He was over a point per game at the World Juniors, and at this point we were all kind of like, man, this guy is legit. He is only 18 years old, he's going out here as a point per game in the playoffs, he was fantastic at the World Juniors, and against men at the NCAA level, he is going to be a star. And a star he has been for the Blue Jackets so far, as in his first season, he had 47 points in 78 games played, plus 11 goals. Eventually, sticking around in the same kind of point territory, he ended up getting 20 goals and 41 points in 63 games played in the shortened 2019-20 season. If you do the math here, 41 divided by 63 multiplied out by 82, he was on pace for about 53 points and roughly 25-ish goals, which, for a defenseman who was only 22 at the time, yeah, that's really gosh darn good. Either way, though, Zach Wierenski this previous season had 20 points in 35 games played, playing for a Blue Jackets team that was the worst team in their division. 20 points in 35 games is really good, though, if you do the math on that season, multiply things out by 82. He was on pace for another 47-point season, which was kind of in the ballpark of where he has been his entire career. However, when you talk about the Blue Jackets and their decor, you have a lot of older guys, you have a lot of guys that have spent more time with the team, and guys that are just kind of, you know, in terms of the hierarchy of greatness amongst Blue Jackets defensemen, above Wierenski. You had Seth Jones on this team, who had 28 points in 56 games played. He was seen as the number one guy on this team. We also had David Savard, who, even though he only had 6 points in 40 games played, was still seen as a veteran, one of the top dogs, this guy who has been on this squad literally for the past decade. And so now, David Savard's gone. He was shipped over to Tampa Bay, subsequently won the Stanley Cup, and now he is in Montreal. And you have Seth Jones, who got traded over to Chicago, in exchange for Adam Boquist, who is a heck of a lot younger. Boquist is projected to being the first pair right side defense alongside of Orinsky on the first pairing, and the rest of the decor kind of goes as follows. You have Gavrikov in there, Andrew Peake, Dean Kukin, and you have Jake Bean as well. You can kind of notice this here, just looking at the projected lineups, but out of all these guys who are projected to being in the Blue Jackets decor, Zach Orinsky now? He's the guy. He is the guy, with a capital T-H-E, he is going to be the guy who is going to be leading this team on the blue line, and it's not even close anymore. In fact, we had this article here on TVA Sports talking about how Zakharinsky is in search of recognition. This is what it says, translated from French into English, because of course, TVA Sports is a French media outlet, so you have to translate these things if you don't speak French. Now that Seth Jones is out of Columbus, Blue Jackets defenseman Zach Wierenski feels that he is ready to show what he is doing. When people talk about me, it's always mentioning Seth Jones' name, Wierenski said Monday when he appeared on the CBJ in 30 podcast. I want people to talk about me for me. 
I'm ready to face this new challenge. I'm ready to show what I'm capable of doing with this team to get us back into the playoffs. And you know, that's always kind of been what I've been... maybe inching towards in my mind whenever I think of the Blue Jackets and Zach Wierenski and Jones and the entire decor and the Johansson trade and all that stuff. I've always been a super big fan of Zach Wierenski ever since his Michigan Wolverine days. I love the prospects in that system. I love the players. I love how that team goes about their business. So anybody who is Wolverines alumni, I usually have my eyes on at the NHL level. Wierenski was one of the best amongst those guys. And so, keeping up with his career in Columbus, it's been fantastic to see just how good he has been. But he's kind of right. Every time people talk about Zach Wierenski, they always have to mention Seth Jones in that same sentence. Because, in most people's minds, you think about the duos, you think about Crosby Malkin, you think about Taves and Kane, you think about, hey, Wierenski and Jones. Furthermore, Seth Jones just fetched a huge haul from the Chicago Blackhawks, and he's a guy who went out there and got himself a really expensive contract. But I'll tell you what right here, Zach Wierenski, he signed himself a contract extension too, one that is also really beefy. He's making $9.5 million a season until 2028. So Wierenski and Jones, if you take a look at the monetary side of things, are no longer equals. Because Seth Jones is making 9.5, Wierenski's making 9.58 technically, so he kind of has the edge over there. The biggest difference, though, is that people don't harp on Zach Wierenski the same way people harp on Seth Jones. There isn't really a reason to go out there and talk about war charts and advanced analytics and data and all that stuff with Wierenski than there is compared to Jones, because Wierenski has just been a better player. Which is why the analytics community is a lot like, okay, well, Wierenski got 9.5... At the very least, it's Wierenski, it's not Seth Jones who went out there and got that same money. Oh wait, he went out there and got it too. So now, you take a look at where Zach Wierenski's own perspective lies with this situation. He's like, yeah, I want people to talk about me for me. I'm ready to be the guy and to face this new challenge on this new team to be that anchor that helps us get back in the playoffs. And it's not like he has any disdain for Seth Jones either. I have so much respect for him, and he is one of my best friends in hockey, Wierenski says. I only wish him the best. However, now is the time for me to show people what I can do on my own. The article then brings up the idea of Wierenski actually getting the captaincy. And I mean, he's 24 years old. There have been other guys who are younger who got captaincies as well. It happens once in a while, right? But this is what Wierenski says on that front. I didn't really think too much about it. We have Jenner, we have Gustav Nyquist, we have Jakub Voracek, and we have Bjorki, Oliver Bjorkstrand. In my opinion, there are a thousand and one ways to demonstrate leadership, and I'm not really the most talked about guy in the bedroom. What in the world? That has to be a loss in translation kind of moment right there. There's no way he said that for real on the podcast, is it? I'm not the most talked about guy in the bedroom, my goodness. Oh, that's why it says bedroom, because the word that the original article uses is chambre, and that is bedroom in French, but it can also mean just room. I'm not the most talked about guy in the room. That makes a lot more sense to me. Oh my goodness. We don't have a captain, and I'm not sure what our club's intentions are. There are, however, a lot of options with the guys we have in our locker room, Wierenski concluded. So, you know what? This is a really interesting shift in the Blue Jackets and their defensive direction in years prior to today. Even the previous season, we had guys like Michael Del Zotto, older guys like Savard, of course, on this team, and now... It's a lot of youthful exuberance here. Boquist was drafted in 2018. Jake Bean, also a young guy. Gavrikov is 25, and Andrew Peak just turned 23 a while ago. So a lot of these guys are going to be fairly young heading into the season. And when you have a group of guys that is all so young like these guys appear to be, you're going to need your anchors to step up, your big guys, your big name players, to go out there and show why they have the responsibilities that they have. Because in years prior, they've been really good, but now if there's any time to step up and be even better, it's today. So for Zach Wierenski, he's going to be going out there trying to live a hockey lifestyle in the spotlight away from the shadow of Seth Jones. And I, for one, am really interested in seeing how exactly he's going to be able to do that. As I've noted, I'm a big fan of these Wolverine guys heading over into the NHL. So I kind of believe in Wierenski. I want to see him go out there and be even better. Let's see him score 25 goals in a year. How about we? But talk to me in the comments, though, if you're a Blue Jackets fan, what you think about this entire idea over here. Do you think Wierenski has what it takes to take that next step? Play with an Adam Boquist work with an Adam Boquist and really ignite that chemistry. Try to replicate what he did with Seth Jones and take over the reins as the guy on your blue line. Talk to me in the comments. What do you think of you enjoyed this with Josh Rolson, Lion 9. And bye. <laughs>